Default and Unity are the engines I used the most to learn game development, but I also had a lot of past experiences with an open source engine named hmm. Godot. Godot recently launched a 4.0 version, which is definitely a breakthrough in its development and actually a totally new engine, and it made me get back to it and check how it looks like today. Godot definitely has an amazingly quickly growing community, but is it worth all the fuss? Is it a reliable option for professional game developers? Is it better or worse than default? Let's find out! Of course, the answer to the question of which game engine is better is very simple. It depends. There is no best game engine definitely and you should always use proper tools for projects you are working on. Sometimes it is best to write your own game engine, sometimes it is better to use default, sometimes Godot and sometimes it is better to find other solutions like Unity, Unreal, Phaser or CryEngine. The best way to decide is to try to make your game in both and compare your experience, but in the current fast running world it might be impossible. Besides technical features, there are a lot of other factors that might weigh on your decision. Accessibility, user experience, reliability, community, isn't comfort of use, learning curve, limitations or platform support. So let's compare some of those factors from a very generic perspective to help you make a decision if you consider now both engines. And also, don't mind my pronunciation of the engine names, default or default, godot or godot, I don't know, and different people pronounce it differently. And a disclaimer like I did with my comparison of default and unity, I don't want to tell which is better, because as I said, none of them is. They have their advantages and disadvantages. This comparison is cut out of as much controversy as I could, but rather focusing on what might be useful for developers to consider. If you think otherwise, let me know in the comments. There are not many comparisons of those two engines, so it might be raising really strong emotions, but I wish the discussion would be fruitful and friendly. Alright, let's do it! Default is a free game engine that was created by former Avalanche developers, acquired in 2013 by King, creators of Candy Crush and released in 2016 to the public for free, but since 2020 it's under its own default foundation and its source code is released on GitHub. It is a modern, well thought reliable and lightweight 3D game engine with plug and play editor and focuses mainly on 2D game development, especially mobile and web games. Its source code is indeed available online, but you can't sell it as your own, so it's not fully open source and that's the only difference when it comes to licensing compared to Godot. Godot is very similar on paper. It's a free and open source small engine with a plug and play editor. It has a focus on both 2D and 3D game development. It was created 8 years earlier, around 2001, by Argentinian developers for several companies at first, and came a long way to its public release in 2013 as an open source game engine. A year later it joined SFC Foundation and another year later a 2.0 was released. Two years later, 3.0 and now 4.0. And it leaves SFC to its own foundation. I love though how noisy Godot releases are compared to Humble Default. For example, when Default released support for Vulkan Renderer in 2020, it was released as a separate extension for developers who really wanted it and they didn't even brag about it much. There are many more examples like PBR, Bullet Physics or GLTF Support Edition and it's definitely better to brag about each such feature more loudly, but there is no point in comparing marketing strategies right now. One of the most significant differences between Default and Godot is their programming language. Godot uses the GDScript programming language, which is its own language similar to Python, improved in the recent 4.0 release. GDScript is relatively easy to learn, but may be less accessible for beginners without prior programming knowledge and is, on the other hand, not used in other game engines. Default uses Lua programming language used in other engines, for example in CryEngine, Lumberyard or Solar2D, and is a lightweight and fast language that is easy to learn, making it a good choice for beginners. Both engines have support for other languages too, but they are not designed to use those, so it should be only treated as an option to consider. Default has support for C++ in official native extensions and some community support for TypeScript, Hacks or C Sharp. Godot has support for C++ and C Sharp through official GD native bindings and community support for example for Rust, Haskell or Clojure. It also had at some point visual scripting but it was removed in Godot 4.0. 
Another important difference between these engines is their focus on 2D and 3D development. Default is primarily focused on 2D game development, making it an excellent choice for developers who want to create 2D games. Godot, on the other hand, has more focus on 3D development, with nice features for 2D games too, making it a versatile engine for developers who want to create different kind of games. Both engines support OpenGL, OpenGL ES 2 and 3, and WebGL. For Vulkan Renderer, Devor has the mentioned official extension since 2020, and Godot 4.0 introduces Vulkan Renderer as well now. For iOS, which demands support for Metal Now, default solves it through Molten VK and Godot through Angle. Moreover, Godot for Zero release comes now with many built-in features for 3D game development like different lighting systems including signed distance field global illumination and voxel global illumination or improved shadows. Godot for Zero adds features like screen space ambient occlusion or multi-sample anti-aliasing, which is not in default an out-of-the-box feature but was implemented in the community already. Default always wanted to offer only a barebone but gives total control to the developers who can add features they like to, while Godot continues adding out-of-the-box features like the mentioned ones, volumetric fox or sky shaders. This all comes with a cost, but we'll discuss it later on. Remember that Godot is just way bigger with over 2000 contributors, while Default has a core team of few persons and few contributors. Default allows you to build for all desktop platforms, Windows, Linux and Mac, for Android, iOS and KaiOS, an OS for very low-end devices, also for HTML5, Facebook games, Nintendo Switch and very soon PlayStation 4 and 5. Default Editor runs on Windows, Mac and Linux. Godot allows you to build for almost the same amount of platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, iOS and HTML5, with a possibility to release on consoles using third-party commercial companies, mostly the ones run by Godot Core contributors. Godot 4.0 adds the possibility to build for virtual and extended reality platforms too. Godot Editor works on Windows, Mac and Linux. Godot has also a web and Android version of Editor since 3 .5. And here I need to complain it a little, because generally my first experience with Godot 4.0 on Windows looks like this. So for now it's better to stick to 3.5.1. In terms of performance, default is known for its general fast rendering speeds and low memory usage. This makes it an excellent choice for developers who want to create games that run smoothly on mobile devices or web games. Godot is fast enough for most game development projects, however it has higher memory usage than default, which may impact performance on older or lower end devices. Things might change with the fresh new Godot 4.0, whose performance is yet to be checked in games, but it needs some time in Owen to fix all the bugs and issues that are sadly right now in, even though it was marked as a stable version. Godot releases are not defined in time, hence among its users it's popular for a constant waiting for the new release, known as Waiting for Godot, which is by the way a name of a play by Samuel Beckett, which was a direct inspiration for the game engine's name by the way. Default is on the other hand updated on a regular basis every month with two weeks of public beta each time, which comes to having less more spectacular changes per release, but its focus was always on assuring devs that it is a reliable tool for professional game development and not the other way around. Both engines provide a range of tools and features to support game development, such as physics engines, tile map tools, particle effects editor and support for third-party libraries. Default has a built-in editor that is simple and easy to use, could be customized with CSS and enhanced with editor scripts, but again, it focuses only on core functionalities, so it may lack some of the advanced features. Godot's editor is more complex and may be overwhelming for beginners, but it has a pretty wide range of features and options that make it suitable for more complex game development projects. When it comes to game file size, Goro has generally a larger file size than default, due in part to its wider range of features and options. With default, you can produce much smaller games, quickly loaded web games and even instant games, Facebook instant games or games to the India market like we've mentioned Kai OS. Default is focused on mobile and web development and besides the game's size, great UI features with adaptive to resolution interfaces, rapid mobile development with mobile app and hot reloading and official plugins for different ads, web monetization, in-app purchases, push notifications, various analytics or other different features and SDKs are constantly upgraded to support newest Android and iOS releases and their requirements. Godot is also trying to be competitive in this field, but in comparison is lacking a lot 
of high quality plugins and optimizations for mobile devices. Default was released later than Godot and as a result has a smaller community than Godot, but it is active, very helpful and growing. The default community includes a forum where developers can ask for help and share ideas as well as an active Discord server where they can chat with other developers and get support from the default team and subreddit. There is also a wide range of tutorials and documentation available on the default website and other online resources. Godot, on the other hand, has a larger and more established community than default, thanks in part to its longer history and wider range of features, but also to its huge marketing and loving fans. The Godot community is active with a range of forums, Discord servers and other resources available for developers. The Godot website also provides extensive documentation and tutorials, as well as a showcase of games developed using the Genji. Godot also has one very good advantage, a wide support for RTL languages. Default and Godot are games game engines that have been used already to create a range of successful games and during this video you watched a bunch of them. Godot has been used to create a range of games, mostly indie titles with few AAA exceptions like Sonic Colors Ultimate. Default is also already proven in battle and we've released games on all supported platforms, with mobile game Family Island being probably one of the most successful here. My experience with both engines is that in default I am angry for lack of some out of the box features and maybe some tutorials, while in Godot I am more angry on bugs in the engine and editor and lack of control on the other hand. For me the decision was simple because I need engine for reliability to have good foundation that allows me to make what I want without not much flexible solutions, but to suit exactly what I need. Godot is going a different pathway, with more focus on delivering easy to use, out of the box generic features that could suit any game and please the vast majority of devs, instead of focusing on providing a bare skeleton for making any kind of games like Devil do. This is sometimes hurtful for Godot because it tries to be good in too many fields, which is sometimes conflicting, while Default has rather a clear and sharp focus. Default is in my opinion a great choice for developers who want to create 2D games, especially mobile and web games, but also for desktops and for Switch. It is free and reliable, easy to grasp and gives you a lot of power on what you want to do without hurting the game's performance. Godot, on the other hand, is a versatile engine and would be great for someone considering making a 3D game and is especially very easy for beginners with a wide range of easy features that might make your life easier and a ton of tutorials on YouTube and other sources. But remember, learning Godot might make it harder to switch to other engines in the future because it has a very specific to Godot, node-based approach and its own programming language. The newest 4.0 version provides a lot of useful features for 3D game development and a new renderer, but is yet unstable for professional development, so we still need to wait for Godot. For now, sticking to 3.5.1 is recommended, because it is a pretty good battle-proven engine. But remember, this is in comparison to default, which is not focused on free games yet. I think if you would compare it to Unreal or Unity, those are still undeniably the best ones for 3D high-quality game development. In conclusion, Default and Godot are both excellent game engines, but they have different strengths and weaknesses. Ultimately, the choice between Default and Godot depends on the specific needs of the game development project. I believe it is more important to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of each engine and especially consider the specific requirements of the game development project you are working on before making a decision. So that would be all. Let me know what do you think about Default and let me know what do you think about Godot and especially the new 4.0 version. Have a nice day and see you soon!